Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're gonna talk about moving walls. So, um, moving walls is something that happens whenever you end up creating an architectural model. Uh, the amount of times you have to move walls or how much you have to move walls, of course, depends job to job. But sooner or later, if you're gonna model a building, a wall is going to have to move. So I want to go in and give us a couple tips on just how to go about that process. Um, and as I was going into this, I realized, you know, there's not a set way that you have to model walls. I mean, everybody will say that their way is the way. But uh, I want, came up with a couple examples based on how you may have your structure modeled. Um, fair warning. Some of these are good ways to do it. Some of them aren't. Some are maybe the way you do them. Some are maybe a way that you don't like doing them. I'm just going to cover several different ways and uh, kind of give some tips on how to move walls in architectural models. Let's hop in. All right. So this first one is the most basic and probably the way that you shouldn't do this. <laughs> start, start with the way that's a problem. So this is a monolithic model. By monolithic model, I mean uh, it's all just loose geometry. So I've just faces and edges here. My components, my doors and windows are separate. So I can see I can actually select any of these and see them as separate pieces. But the rest, everything else is just geometry. Now, this example kind of holds true too. If I, if I was to grab all of this and make it a group and I go into that group, same thing still applies here where all my geometry floors and my walls are all just together. So if I'm going to move walls, I'm going to say in this example that I want to take this wall and make it two feet this way. I want to take it out two feet. Um, so there's a couple ways to do it. Some of them make sense. Some are kind of silly uses of the tool. I would say the easiest way to move a wall is if you can select it, go like this, do a selection from the side. And what I get there is there's my window component. There's my face of the wall on the exterior, face the wall on the interior. Now I can simply use move. And I have a habit of moving along lines as opposed to using inferencing, but same thing works. I can click right here, start moving this direction, type in the exact dimension I want to offset two foot, enter. There we go. Pretty simple. Um, to simplify that even more, when you think about moving a wall, there's really only two faces that have to move. This interior face, and I'm going to hold down shift and click this exterior face. Everything else I selected, the edges, the insides of the window, the window component itself, don't have to be selected. So I could grab that, I'll start moving it this way, and move it back two foot. That's really all that has to be selected. Because this is a monolithic model, it's all one big chunk, my, my walls on the side move along with this wall. Uh, the only thing I'd have to move at that point is the window to scoot that back over, and I could say, again, two foot. And get that in there. Now this works just fine as long as I don't go past any geometry that is in any of these walls. So obviously I can't go past this, you know, about here because if I do, I'm going to run into this door opening, and obviously I can't go past this way because that, that would cause all kinds of problems. But if I'm staying staying there, then I can just bring this out two foot, boom, piece of cake. All right, let's talk about uh, interior walls. Interior walls very similar but they tend to get trickier a lot quicker and this is a very simplified model right so i don't have uh you know baseboard or crown molding or chair rails or furniture or carpet or anything in here this is super stripped down this is i'm making a change in this right at the beginning um let's look at moving interior walls like i said end up getting to be an issue a little quicker a lot of times than exterior walls uh, just because there's so much stuff going on on the inside and it's generally smaller pieces. So with this one, if I wanted to move this over this way a foot, um, immediately I got, I got some issues right away, right? So let me just, I'm going to temporarily delete this and look what happened with that opening. So just kind of a mess. If this is going to happen, what I would recommend is doing this in phases, right? So I'm going to go grab this door and maybe, actually maybe what I'll do is hide this door temporarily and then grab this opening. Opening is created by three or four faces that create the wrap around the door. Oop, got the edge. There we go. Take that, move that this way, 12 inches. Then I can take 
this wall and move it 12 inches and I'm good to go. Obviously, I get my door back, edit, unhide all. This is really the only way you should use hide. If I, if I actually had these on their own layer, that would have been just easy too, right? To just turn off my interior doors and slide it over two foot, there we, or one foot, there we go. So just be conscious of the, the material that's selected. All right, I have a different breakdown of a structure here. Uh, I, this is getting closer to what I would probably do if I was modeling this, and that is breaking into groups. So I have a floor group, an exterior wall group, and an interior wall group. Now, the actual function of moving stuff is pretty similar because I would come into this group, grab this, move it out two foot. There I go. Now I do have to do a little extra work because I got to come in here. Th on here, because it's just a slab, I can use push pull and just pop that out pretty quick and easy like that. And then grab that window and slide it over 24 also. Now, this is, like I said, pretty common way to break down structures. The nice thing about this is, you know, I can isolate this stuff so I can go in and work just on these exterior walls all at once. Um, this, like I said, this should not be happening. If, if this is what your model looks like, go watch some of our other videos on breaking down buildings, that sort of thing, and think about how you have it broken down. This right here, this allows me to put these different pieces on different tags. Um, I can actually, you know, interact with them one piece at a time. It makes it a lot easier. Look at this. So if I want to scoot that over, same thing. I can come in here way easier because I can come here. Maybe you can, maybe you can even do this. Let's see. No, I grabbed too much there. I, I got, I got greedy. Let's turn that off. All right, but I can slide that over this way, 12 inches. And I can grab this and this, slide that. Oops. All right, try it again. Slide that over 12 inches. Cool, and then I come out here again. The door because it's a separate component. So some people ask this, well, why don't I just model the door as part of the wall? Absolutely, you could do that, but you probably shouldn't. One way or another, I'm probably going to want to move these separate from the openings. If I ever go in and start like putting framing in, I wanna have that separate. Uh, if I'm doing any kind of takeoff, if I'm counting the doors that I have my model, I wanna have them as separate components. There's tons and tons of arguments for why to keep this as a separate component and the Ease of making changes later on is offset by the benefit of having them as their own components. So some people may think, oh, I'll just explode that, and make it all the same part. Then you have so many more faces to try to select. If this was exploded and I wanted to move the door, I'd have to make sure to get every one of those, but not get any of the other geometry to scoot it over. It's a pain. Keep it componentized. All right. Another way to break down walls, and this is probably the direction that I would end up going if I was creating a full model of a, a layout like this, is to actually have each wall be its own group or component. Now there's, of course, arguments about why I would go this way versus this way. There's some valid points. It really comes down to your workflow. Are you gonna be framing this, or is it just for architectural? What level of visibility control do you need with tags, that sort of thing? In this case, um, maybe I am going into framing, so I want each wall separate so that I can use this envelope to generate my framing, something like that. I would have it broken down. This, of course, is the easiest way to, to update this stuff, right? I grab these two pieces, I slide it this way, 24, like that. Now, here's the thing that happens. So this guy right here, I may be tempted to use scale, right? And pull that out. Okay, go, okay, it should go out to here. Problem with that, of course, is uniform scale is going to mess with my door opening. So don't do that. Instead, what you probably do, just like I, I edited the floor before, I could probably just grab this, click over to here, and I'll just run around, do, do them all, pull my floor out to here, grab my end wall here, pull that wall out to here, and there we go. Now everything is adjusted correctly. The process of actually moving this, of course, so the nice thing is here is I can grab this and I can go, okay, move it over 12 inches. The cool thing here, why, the reason this is nice is I can evaluate where do I want this door to actually be now? So if I slide it over 12 inches, is that where I want it? Well, maybe I want to have this a little snugger. Maybe I'll move this back like another two inches, something like that. Um, so I'll come on the green axis, whoop, green, other green, and then just say move that over two more inches. Maybe that's that's where I want that. 
I can do this kind of stuff because everything's in a separate group and nothing's going to get stuck together. Once I have that, then I can grab, you know, I can use, I can even use push pull here, go drag that over there and then push this one back to here. And, oh, probably going to also want to pull that back there. So with this, I have a little more control with experimenting and testing things because that none of that geometry is going to join together. In both of these examples, my interior walls were all connected together. So I had to, you know, potentially move the door all the way out of the way before I move the wall. In this case, because I have separate pieces, it's just a matter of sliding a component around and seeing where it's going to work best. But there we go. Those are three examples of some wall geometry and how you might go about moving each of them. This was actually brought to me, somebody asked me if, if I could make a video on how to do this very thing, uh, which is awesome. This is the kind of feedback we love. Love hearing where you're running into stuff where you're not quite sure what to do. Let me know and uh, we'll do our best to make a video for you. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you will be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, more than anything else though, leave us a comment. Like I said, love hearing from you. Love hearing what you would like to see. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.